Alright, so what you're seeing here is not multiple text objects, this is actually just one text object. Now we're achieving this using some kind of hidden features, I guess you could say, in the property actuator, some things you you don't really know about if you first look at it, it's not even documented. So I'm going to be going over how we can do this and how we can do math calculations more than just, you know, plus and minus in there as well. So this is just a basic scene with a text object I have. Uh, if I go ahead and add a property to the text object, what you'll see is now we have that there. Um, we can do a lot with this. Now, if we go ahead, you see we have two different property uh, values over here. So if we click the top one, this is going to add a property to the text object, which is a different property, only comes with a text object. And whatever we assign to that text value is going to display as the text in game, which is really powerful. So now I've just added always and and, so now basically whenever we start the game it's going to run this. So if we just put 1 in the value and we press play, <laughs> when I actually get into the right position, alright, I also need to be in Blender game of course. Um, now, as you can see, yep, it's assigned it to 1, that is exactly what we want. Now if you would go to add... You can see it's added on as well instead of just assigning it. And it is a string, so it's not, you know, it's not adding on top of it and so on. So we can go ahead and we could say 1 um, plus 1. And of course it's going to equal 2, but, you know, there we go. So that's not really that amazing because you might as well just put the number 2 there. But when it really gets really useful is we can go ahead and instead of those 2s we had... We can use property. So we can say, let's say we have two properties, not three, two, two. And these are going to be integers because we want to do maths with them. So let's say one and two. And actually, I'm going to have to change it just a second later. So let's go 10 and 25 for the bottom. These can't actually be numbers because we need to, you know, refer back to them in the value slot. And if you use numbers, it's not going to work. So I'm going to use the top one is going to be Q. Q and the bottom one's going to be W. So now we can say Q and then we can say Q plus W. What it's going to do is it's going to plus them together and then it's going to add the result on. So as you can see on the end of our text is we have an add value it's 35. So it is working. It's working great. Now you can do different maths calculations as well. So you can use different stuff like uh, times. So as you see, if we use times, now we have a value of 250, which is really, really useful. So it allows us to do lots of different stuff. Um, so we can also go ahead and say 10, just a normal number, and as you can see, it's working. So it works with numbers or variables, really whatever you want, which is really, really useful. So I can go ahead and I can also go plus, and then we can go ahead and do two ear brackets, um, quote marks, sorry. And we can go ahead and say blender. Alright, so that's defining it, that is the string. And if we press play, as you can see, text 100 blender. So that text is the thing we start off with, then blender, uh, sorry, 100 is the thing we got from math, math calculation. And blender is what we add. Now what we can go ahead and do here is just have this property. And we can put that there, and what we're going to do is we're just going to say this string is going to be equal to blended. So we're doing what we did before, but instead of hard coding it into that actual property thing, now it's in a property, so we could change this property later if we wanted. So instead of having a blender on the end, we could have whatever we wanted to set it to. Which can be really, really powerful if you, if you think about it and come up with a lot of options you can do. So it can become really, really powerful, really, really fast. So this is a few more things you can do. So let's go ahead and learn how I did that thing I showed you at the start. So let's go ahead and delete all of this. So we're just left with a add, uh, assign. Let's go assign. Assign one and we assign nothing and it's doing nothing. So that's perfect. So let's have a string and we're going to call this text and the top one's text so we can't have it that name So what I'm doing is an, I'm having text without a capital T so we can use that Because it is cap sensitive so Now we can go ahead and add some text so you can say your points are This is going to be our text There we go 
So now we've got that, we can just go ahead and put points there, and it says your points are, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted. Now we can go ahead and add another integer, and we can say, uh, there we go, points, sorry, um, what I'm saying, the text before. <laughs> so we have text, and then it's plus points, so there we go. Now we have your points are zero. So let's actually add a number so it shows something good. So as you can see, there we go. Your points are 10. Now this can be changed dynamically in the game. And as long as you update that text thing again, it's going to show the number there. So we can go ahead and also, if we want a space in the middle, we can use the property here if we like. So we can go ahead and turn this um, into a string after we get a correct word so we can't use any of the special symbols so we have to use like a letter so i think s should be fine for what we want so just small s and let's go ahead and put that in between so we're going to put another plus and we're going to dump that in between the pluses so as you can see s plus uh plus s wait sorry text plus s plus points and as you can see we put a space in that string category, that string bit, and that made a space, so there we go. Or you can just use two in between where we had the property S before, you can use two air quotes, and as you can see, now we have a space as well, you just need to have a space in between those air quotes as well, so either way works fine. So we can go ahead and continue a little bit, so let's add some end bits so we can go two ear brackets but well, we can go plus and then two ear brackets and within that we can say that's cool or whatever you want to say and we can also I'm just gonna make that look a bit nicer we can also copy that thing we did before and paste it in between this and now we have a space so it says your points are 10 that's cool so there we go uh, a little bit about the property actuator and it really works well. So let's go ahead and see some action. So an updating. So let's go every 10 ticks. We want to change the value of points. Uh, so you could use a message actuator for this or something. And let's go ahead and go and say is uh, points. Sorry. Points. Come on. And we're going to go and assign one. So you can see every 10 ticks we assign one. And there we go, our, our thing's working, we've got the number in between, and it works really well, so there we go. Um, there's a lot more you can do, a lot, lot more, but this is the basic, you can do division, times, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you could come up with more advanced things than me, but there we go, that is how you do it. Use the property actuator to do cool stuff like this. So, if you want to see more tutorials like this and tutorials on other subjects, you can go ahead and subscribe because I come out with a new tutorial every single week. So, thanks for watching. Keep blendering and make something cool because I really think this could be useful for some kind of game. Um, I'm sure someone can use it. So, have a great week.